Bam! You just finished your first Ironman. Congratulations. Now what? Okay, so you probably have these thoughts of I never want to do another one of these again, or I can't wait to sign up for the next one, or man, that was hard, or man, my legs hurt, or I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. All these crazy thoughts running through your head. But do you have a game plan for how to treat the next hours and days and weeks to optimize your recovery? Hi, I am retired professional triathlete TJ Tollickson, and today I am going to tell you how best to recover from an Ironman. And I will tell you, like most things in life, it starts with a plan. Secondly, I don't even believe you have a plan. I have part of a plan. What percentage of a plan do you have? I don't know. 12%. 12%? We're going to get into the recovery right now, and it starts with Rysum. So you heard, if you watch some of my other videos about recovery, you heard me talk about RICE. RICE stands for rest, ice, compression, elevation. Well, this is RICEUM, okay? Rest, ice, recovery, elevation, movement. Okay, the last one there is movement, really important. So, number one, rest. Most important thing you can do in the weeks after your Ironman, sleep. Sleep as much as you can. Try to sneak in a nap. That may mean not using caffeine for the recovery. However, caffeine can actually help you recover because it does speed your metabolism up. So if I had to weigh the benefits of caffeine or sleep, I would tell you always number one is sleep. Okay, sleep is the way your body recharges, recovers, repairs itself, natural human growth hormone. Sleep as much as you can. Next, ice. This is ice. And I know some of you are thinking right now, I thought ice baths were all debunked and you're not supposed to use them and there's no health benefit. Look, if you just race an Ironman, you have all kinds of inflammation in your body, especially your joints, your knees, your ankles, your hips, will thank you for using ice. If you don't have an ice bath, can you use ice packs? Yes, you can. Ice packs will do wonders for you. If you have an ice bath, submerging yourself in water that is 52 to 56 degrees will have an optimal recovery to reduce the inflammation in your joints, at the same time reducing your core temperature and allowing more blood to flow to that area. Okay, so that's the ice side of it. The next, compression. This is a big one. You should be racing your Ironman run with compression socks. Yes, you should be racing your Ironman run with compression socks. Why? Blood flow. It's a very simple answer. Blood flow. My very first Ironman, I did not use compression socks. When I started using compression socks, I immediately felt the advantage. And the advantage comes not only during the race, well, it helps blood flow. It helps blood return up your legs by never pulling in your feet in the first place, okay? You have problems losing toenails during an Ironman? Compression socks will help prevent that. Geez, you know, that information might have been a little more useful to me yesterday. Not losing your toenails will also help improve your recovery because it's one less thing your body has to do to repair itself, okay? And it helps because it's just a lot less painful to not lose your toenails than it is to lose your toenails. The next thing that compression socks will do is they will stop a massive amount of swelling in your legs once you cross that finish line. Okay, this is really important. I don't actually believe when you sleep you need to keep those compression socks on, but as soon as you get vertical, as soon as you get up the next day in the morning, compression socks again. Compression socks, compression socks, compression socks every day. It needs to be a part of what you do because it will stop the blood from pooling down in your legs and help you recover faster. Understood. Okay, so that's the compression sock side of it. The next side are your Normatec boots. You're gonna need your Normatec boots uh, for that same reason. It helps pump that blood that's stuck down in your feet back up towards your heart, okay? Use those boots on a daily basis for weeks after you race, okay? You will notice a difference. 
And if I had to tell you when to use it, use it before you go to sleep at night, okay? Very, very important. All right, the next thing, compression, our next step is the E, elevation. What does elevation mean? Well, for those people who go to work the day after an Ironman, I feel sorry for you, but I've been there myself. You know, we're living in a society. Uh, it's not very comfortable, but if you go to work and you sit, get yourself a desk hammock. What's a desk hammock? Oh, it's a little tent that goes under your desk. It's a little shelf for you to put your legs up. Okay, so you could sit down in your chair, put your legs up in the desk hammock, and what that does is it stops the blood again from cooling down to your feet, okay? Elevation, what else can you do? You could sleep in your bed, you could elevate your feet. You could sleep on a wedge, put your feet up, or just put some extra pillows at the end of your bed to put your feet higher. Am I doing it right? Shh. Elevation is very important. This next one, however, the M, the RISEM, is the most important step in your Ironman, movement. So let's talk about the best movement you can do after an Ironman, swim. The best thing you can do the day after your Ironman is get your entire body submerged in water and swim. Day one through day three, I recommend just those, well, day one and day two, I'll say that. I recommend nothing but swimming. Day three, go ahead and hop on that bike. Now, day one, can you hop on the bike? Yes, but you're gonna be sore, your legs aren't gonna feel very good. So if you hop on the bike right away, make sure you keep it super, super light and you can just spin those legs. But you can get an even better blood flow just by kicking with a kickboard in the swimming pool. Because not only are you flushing your legs by kicking quickly, you also have the compression of the water surrounding your legs to help pump that blood. And so if you do vertical kicking in the water, it's even better. The rest of you is gonna be really sore too. So your arms, your shoulders, your neck, your back, also gonna be very sore from Ironman. So swimming is the best movement you can have because it's full body, it's submersed in water, you get natural compression, it will make you feel the best. So those first two days, really important. Next day, all right, get on the bike. Again, keep the bike light. Don't try to ride hard, keep it very light. Ride in your small chain ring. I know this is against many people's religion to ride in their small chain, chain ring, but ride in your small chain ring because your focus should be on RPMs, not on power, okay? If you can do your recovery rides at a 100 RPMs, you're doing great. If you cannot ride at 100 RPMs, you should probably go back and get in the swimming pool. After that third day, on day four, I think it's okay to introduce some running depending on how sore your legs are. Okay, I've done an Ironman before where after four days there was no possible way I was going to start running because of how bad my legs hurt just to the touch. Oh my gosh! Oh my legs! Oh God, I can't feel my legs! Day four, you can introduce some light running. I recommend keeping that running to 20 minutes or less. Uh, and make sure when you run, you're doing the same thing uh, as you were on the bike. Short, little strides. More of a jog. I believe it's jogging or jogging. It might be a soft J. I'm not sure, but apparently you just run. Go ahead and use your jogging skills. Do the best you can and jog it out for a few days. And each day you can add a little bit more so the legs feel better. Now, total timeline. First two weeks, most important recovery time. Have that plan, have it planned out. Know exactly what you're going to do. Plan your recovery for your first two weeks every day so you know what you're doing. Can that plan change? Yes, because sometimes you feel a little better, sometimes you feel a little worse. It can be a fluid plan, but write it down because having a plan will help you versus not having a plan. Okay, so you did that for two weeks. Try to continue these things between six to eight weeks. Okay, some people it will take a full six to eight weeks to recover from the Ironman. What you just did racing an Ironman was causing traumatic, traumatic, traumatic damage to your body. But racing back-to-back -back weeks of Ironman is not a good idea for anybody, even a pro. It's a terrible idea. It's taking years off your career. It's suboptimal and it's not good. You saw Sam Long try to do this, fail at this. Let Sam's lesson be a lesson for you. Don't do it. Don't try it. Don't be suboptimal. 
unless your goal is sub-optimization. If you're just trying to race as many Ironmans as you can, you wanna be Iron Cowboy, then go for it. If you're trying to race a triathlon as fast as you can, you need probably six weeks in between. And I say this, I have raced five weeks after an Ironman, but I will tell you it is also suboptimal. Uh, seven weeks, six weeks, five weeks, whew, touch and go. I can tell you what it's like. I've done it several times. You're gonna have days where you feel great. You're gonna have days where you feel like dog poo. No, you're thinking of shit. Oh, right. You're gonna get a mix. And so if you do that short, the one thing that must be right is your mind. You have to have so much motivation to get through this Ironman and know that you're committed to it 100%. That is how you recover from an Ironman. That's my plan. Write some, plan it out, write your plan down, execute your plan. It can be fluid, but the more you plan, the better you are. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more of it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I've got all kinds of great Ironman tips on training, nutrition, racing, amazing content. I would love for you to join me on this journey. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check it out every week.